Hey guys, welcome back to Various Corner. It's Emily here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys all the books that I read in July. I literally cannot believe it's August already. Like, I'm going to college soon. I am going to start work again. Just, I just need just one more month. Just one more month to myself, okay? And it'll be all good. I actually read 11 books in July, which is pretty good for me. Like, I average five to six books a month. So this is basically almost double. And I'm so excited because I read pretty good books this month. So before I show you the books, please subscribe, comment down below, and like this video. All my social links are down in the description box below, as well as my Amazon wishlist if you'd like to give me a book. Now let's get on into the video. So if you guys saw my last wrap up video, I read Shatter Me in June. And so of course I had to finish the trilogy in July. I know it's a series, but she made it first as a trilogy. And I finally got to tabbing the books and Oh my gosh, I absolutely enjoyed it. Like if you know me, Todd Amafi in the Shatter Me series is my favorite series and author of all time. Like since middle school, this has been the series. First of all, I don't know what the Shatter Me series is about. It's about a girl named Juliet who her touch is lethal. She can kill you with one touch and she gets put into an insane asylum. And then there's a war going on and she gets caught in the middle of it. The second book in the series is Unravel Me and one of the main complaints in the first book is that Juliet is super meek and weak and for me one of my favorite parts of the series is that you see Juliet grow throughout the books. So in this book we really follow her training and people around her training and her actually learning more about the reestablishment learning more about where she's at right now because I can't tell you where she's at, but it does involve Kenji and we love Kenji. I love just seeing the relationships in this book forming because in the first book, it was honestly just Juliet and Adam. And that was pretty much all the relationship we got, which we enjoyed. But in this book, we see Kenji and Juliet's relationship forming and it's so freaking cute. We see a little bit of Juliet and Warner. I think that in this book, the quotes between Juliet and Warner are iconic. This book did not have middle book syndrome at all. It was so freaking good. I ended up giving it a four stars because look, I know that there's a little bit more growth to occur. So then when we read Ignite Me, which also I tabbed for the first time, we finally got the growth that we deserved. Juliet is completely herself, completely grown into her powers, grown into who she wants to be, who she needs to be. And she's so confident and so badass. Like in the first book, any courageous thing that she did, it was honestly for Adam, not for herself. And so now she's doing it all for herself, no matter what. And even though there's like a guy in the picture, she wanted to fully come into her powers and be okay with herself before she actually got into a relationship and I think that's what makes her relationship with Warner a little bit different than her relationship with Adam. This book is always a five out of five stars, the best book in the series and I just love this series as a whole. It's so freaking good and I will forever stand by that. Continuing on with series. The Summer I Turned Pretty series. I think these books had everybody in a chokehold because of the show that just came out. I'm gonna be blunt and very honest. I did not like this series whatsoever and we will go in order. So I got the first book. Well, first of all, I got all these books together, but the movie or show cover, stunning. I love this cover so freaking much. But basically, if you don't know what this book is about, it's about this girl named Belly. And every single summer, she goes to this beach house with her mother's friend and her the mother's friend's sons. And she has this huge crush on this guy named Conrad and Jeremiah, who now maybe likes her this, who knows? She's just growing into herself. And now she doesn't look like she did all the past summers ago. This book I did not like. I read To All the Boys I Loved Before, that series by Jenny Han that also became a movie series anyway. And I absolutely adored it. I loved Jenny Han's writing. I loved how she wrote the romantic scenes. I love how she wrote the tension. Literally, it was the complete opposite. Jenny Han's writing did not mesh with me at all. The pacing in this book, horrible. There like literally nothing happened. How she wrote the romantic scenes in this whole entire series, I, I can't. I literally, like, she did not know how to write love interests or just romantic scenes in general. Like, she tried to tell us, like, oh my god, he's looking at me different. But we did not see him look at her different. It was just, what, is this just me, guys? Is it just me? And I don't understand how Conrad was the guy at the end. Not the guy at the end. Like, I'm not giving you a spoiler. Like, come on. She likes Conrad. But, like, I don't, like, we did not get the Conrad redemption arc that we were supposed to get throughout the entire series. Like it was just so bad. So I gave this book a two stars. But what's crazy is I bought the whole series all at once. So I couldn't just 
not continue. So then I read It's Not Summer Without You, the second book in the series, and could it? You know what? Honestly, this book wasn't too bad. First of all, we got Jeremiah's perspective, and I loved Jeremiah's perspective. I thought that was cute. We didn't get enough of Jeremiah's perspective. We basically got no character interactions. It's just, it was just basically this whole book was just set in one scene. It felt like it at least. I just don't get how Conrad and her are like shipped together because there's they don't they don't interact. Even when they do interact, nothing said. Like literally at all. But then we got to We'll Always Have Summer by Jenny Han, the last book in the series. And wow, this was the worst book. This one has Conrad's perspective, which I actually really enjoyed. We needed to have Conrad's perspective throughout all of the books. Literally, please, if she would have put that in, it would have been so good. This is actually set a couple years later when Belly and Jeremiah and Conrad, they're all in college, basically. And I'm just going to say one thing. Jenny Han in this series really promotes cheating and like no backlash from that and no consequences literally whatsoever in the show she did that too like Belly's brother cheated and we were all like oh whatever like he likes the girl that he whatever like he just felt too insecure no no we're not doing that we're not doing that honey that's not how that works I'm just gonna say this book ruined Jeremy for me and I feel like you can like break a love triangle without having them do something so like harsh okay anyway two stars for the series all around i guess i wanted to continue with the ya romance so i read a fa love story by lon lee and so this is basically about two people bao and lin and they are both children that grew up in a vietnamese restaurant right across from each other it's basically a romeo and juliet retelling their parents hate each other but of course they start to like each other and i didn't love this book i felt like it was too long for nothing to happen in between the romance was cute but i've definitely seen cuter ya romances you know what i mean like with more tension and more cute cheesiness but this didn't really have that what i really did enjoy in this book was the diversity and the talk about their life growing up like as a hispanic person whenever i would meet somebody else that like had gone through the same experiences that i had and grew up the same way i had i literally felt this a big amount of giddiness in my soul and so watching them find another person that knows exactly what they've been through made me feel so giddy inside and it literally melted my heart i loved it so freaking much and i feel like asian representation is sort of coming to the forefront no i don't think it i don't know but we we need more asian representation and i don't think i've ever read a vietnamese it's always like chinese korean japanese i've never read a vietnamese story and so i think that was so special to me as well for this to be the first vietnamese stories i've ever read i thought it was cute but i think since i'm reading a lot of adult romances right now it did not hold a candle but I think if you're trying to learn about Vietnamese culture and you just want this cute like YA romance I think it's worth the read I gave it a three stars but um it was okay the next book that I read was Divergent by Veronica Roth um okay so what's crazy is I read Carve the Mark by Veronica Roth way before I read this book and I just didn't compute that it was like the same author like I just did not comprehend that it was I don't know but I finally read Divergent and if you know me I have a series on my channel called I read blank for the first time and of course I made a whole entire video about this book um so I won't be talking in detail but if you don't know what Divergent is about it's basically about a girl named Beatrice or Triss and she lives in a dystopian society that basically has factions so you can be raised in one faction but at 16 you can switch your faction she goes into dauntless maybe there's a war going on or trying to go on or trying to start um and maybe she gets caught in the middle of it i enjoyed this book i'm just gonna say my rating i gave it a four stars 4.5 i freaking enjoyed this book i just need for like the hunger games and like the twilight and the divergent era to come back right now okay that's all i need loved it let's go on next i read a ya fantasy called the bells this has been on my shelves for years and i also made a video about this so i won't really be talking in detail but if you don't know what this book is about it's basically about this girl named camellia or camilla and she is basically a bell in a world where everybody is gray and so that she can give them color and beauty and she really wants to be the favorite which basically she lives in the castle and works for the royal family but little does she know some craziness is going on behind the scenes and 
and maybe some love interests that she's not supposed to have because Abel can't be dating anybody. So it was a very cute YA fantasy. All I'm going to say is I gave this a four stars. I enjoyed it. I think there are better YA fantasies, but it was it was definitely super cute and a fast read. Okay, next we're going to talk about The Stopover by T.L. Swan, I think. I saw this on TikTok where it was like, oh, this girl had a one night stand with the guy and then six months later, it's her boss. What is she gonna do? And I was like, you know what? I'm in the mood. I'm in the mood right now. And I actually really freaking enjoyed it. I was truly struggling to find a book that had a good balance between romance and spice. Like, and I just couldn't find one. So I, my expectations were on the floor, but this book seriously exceeded my expectations truly at the beginning the guy was just so freaking dominant to the point where i was like okay i'm kind of annoyed by him like he's just a creepy guy and if it continues throughout the whole entire book i don't think i can like like them if it's just purely spice but by the end he becomes this huge freaking fluff ball teddy bear for her and i'm like yes you go and grovel for her you go beg for her because you did not deserve her like how you treated her in the beginning not that you treated her horrible it was just like weird okay and like it was something that i could root for the spice on the spice scale eight to nine like it's not like crazy but it's like it's definitely a lot of scenes and i truly think that if you're trying to find that balance and like you tried penelope douglas like me and it was just like okay this is not like i i read corrupt by penelope D penelope whoa i can't speak right now i tried corrupt by penelope douglas and i hated it like it was just why and this is such a good alternative so try it i give it a four stars it was like genuinely pretty good then another tiktok got me and i read in 27 days and it's a wattpad novel that is now published and it's basically about a girl and this guy in her school committed suicide so she goes to the funeral and death comes up to her and it's like hey do you want to save this guy? I'll put you back 27 days in time and you can like prevent him from committing suicide. And she's like, um, why 27 days? And he's like, oh, because that was how many days it took for him to figure out how to kill himself. And she's like, um, okay, anyway, a romance forms. And I thought it was so good. Like, unlike a fun love story that felt really young and just not, I didn't see the connection between the characters. This was young and cheesy in the best way possible. It was so refreshing. And like, yes, it deals with a dark topic, but it wasn't like too dark that I would have to put like a heavy trigger warning for, like honestly at all. He was a little bit mean in the beginning. And I was like, look, if you're gonna be like this the whole time, I don't know if I could root for you, but I ended up really enjoying them, like enjoying the characters. And I just liked it. Again, I gave it a four, well, 3.75. 3.75 which is really good for a Wattpad book two of four but it was good if you're looking for a Wattpad novel I genuinely truly think that this one is like worth it and I don't say that about Wattpad <laughs> novels often now the last book that I read um I also read for a video that I'm currently filming at the moment Never World Waits by Marisha Pessel I buddy read this with my friend Megan or head over books here on booktube and it was truly a ride if you know me i don't really read a lot of thrillers or mysteries and this is both of those things it's about this girl named beatrice and she had a friend group back in the day but senior year her boyfriend killed himself or was murdered we don't know yet we don't know what happened he was killed and so she's kind of confused she does not believe that he killed himself and so she goes back to the friend group one night and is like trying to figure out what happened and then they got into a car accident and they're stuck in this never world awake where they have to vote for who to live and the rest dies and so in this they're trying to solve the death and oh, gosh every single person in this book was just lying through their teeth like hiding something even the good characters and so you're just like what is going on but honestly I don't think thriller every single thriller book I've ever read I've given a four stars this one including but I think it was so phenomenal one of the best thriller books I've ever read so maybe it is like a five star maybe it's a 4.5 I don't know something's missing I don't know but like I it's good if you like the turn of the key this is completely different but I think you would absolutely and adore this book okay so those were all the books that i read i absolutely enjoyed my reading month it was so freaking good please in the comments let me know what you read any books that were surprising any books that you hated you liked you loved just let me know please subscribe comment down below do whatever you want to do and goodbye